been destroyed during the invasion of uh, Normandy. Yeah. Uh, somebody landed on the street, and uh, there we go, that's using uh, the uh, wind on the nose, if you like, to slow down the aircraft to incredibly slow flight. So you can give an extra reason to point to. If you want to fly that slowly over enemy lines, at least not going to be another case, but there we go. Um, but yes, the airplane was destroyed by shell fire and was purported to be the first thing, the first Allied airplane to be destroyed, destroyed on the Normandy. Well, where they go, there we go, look, here's an example of what uh, uh, Matthew's showing you now in terms of the maneuverability of the airplane. And uh, its ability to hop up over the trees and surprise one or two people and then pull in. The artillery fire that was required to uh, neutralise that particular pocket of resistance. Now, to tell you just a little bit about cup flying, I'll talk to Brendan if I may. Yes, of course, again, uh, Peter, as we were saying earlier on, uh, talking about the, the Tiger Moth and the Chipmunk, this is one of the classic aeroplanes of all time. The Piper Cub, everybody knows, the Spitfire, the Tiger Moth, the DC-3, and effectively, we've got them all here today, in one form or another. Uh, the Piper Cub, uh, designed way back, really, uh, before the Second World War, uh, I'm not quite sure what the date is, but it's fine that. 1940. A very, very simple aeroplane. You compare them to cars. But even so, it's a wonderful way to get into the air, and it's a very simple and cheap aircraft to both fly and maintain. And here it is coming into a kind of a Kazon approach, a uh, high speed approach. This basically is the Cub flat out. That is coming in. Flying down, low level at low speed. You can see this one with only 65 horsepower. So it's quite a small engine, but still, with those long wings, you can see the struts uh, holding the wing up, incredibly manoeuvrable. You can see how slowly he's flying. So with Cubs, it's not a question uh, really of how fast you can fly, but how slowly. Again, being a tailwheel type, you still have to have life below your waist when you are flying these aircraft, because it's all about footwork. And particularly in uh, gusty winds or strong winds, you really have to keep on top of the aircraft. For anyone who wants to get into flying, I couldn't more recommend uh, you learning to fly on and maybe even owning a Piper Cub. Coming in for his last pass now. I don't know whether it's going to be a fast or a slow pass, but everything is relative, of course, to the cut. But it might be an opportunity to uh, get away, so, yeah, I think he's going to fly. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your show. Without you being here, we wouldn't have a show at all. So get involved. There he is. Matthew Hill flying that lovely cut. Give him a big wave. Hats, coats, umbrellas, bras, tables, anything. Throw them up in the air. Get excited. Get involved. And do the business. All right, Peter. Back to you. Brendan, thank you very much. Uh, right, he's beginning to use the cross runway to land on, which is 210. And I was delighted to uh, mention, I'm not sure, I can't remember whether Brendan did, but uh, I talk about Jan Fraser organising fair shows over at Duxford, as a company play director, this is her aeroplane. And we're delighted to welcome Jan Mumby here today. So, good afternoon, and I uh, hope you're having a nice time. Thank you. Good. Any more in there if you can. So okay, here we come then, that's to do with the cab round. There we are, flying, literally flying into the ground. Very nice to Excellent. A great exhibition of uh, cab flying. Uh, 